What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. This is The Deep Corner, episode 28. I'm Rob St. Clair, and a special guest today on the show, the setter from the Phoenix Ascension, Mr. Zach Melcher. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to see you and talk to you again. Thanks, man. You too. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a, a crazy couple months since uh, the last time, well, more than a couple months since the last time we were all able to get in the, into the gym together. But thankfully, we've got a date. We've got a date in the calendar, uh, July 3rd through 5th, where we're finally going to get to see you guys again. So uh, I'm really excited for that. How much volleyball have you played since you, like, you got back from overseas in March until, like, I don't know, you're going to try to throw good volleyball together in a couple weeks? Yeah, we had our first time getting back in the gym last Thursday. So that was probably the first time I got to lace up the indoor shoes in since like pretty much early March. And then I played like a little bit of grass ball just with some of the Ascension guys, just trying to get our contacts up. But other than that, just peppering with my fiance, that's about all the realistic touches I can get. Yeah, you did get engaged during the quarantine since being back. So congratulations about that. That's that's yeah, big news. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're excited. It's a crazy time trying to figure this out, but you know, love should win. So that's right, and so should volleyball uh, eventually. So we're gonna gonna get some matches off the floor about time. So we'll talk a lot about your you and your ascension guys later, uh, but I kind of want to start from the beginning of your volleyball career because you've been been a lot of different places including the Czech Republic this past pro season so where did it all start for you uh, you're an Arizona guy born and raised which has a pretty good volleyball scene but like what age did you first like take the game kind of seriously yeah so I guess that would start I mean I moved to Arizona when I was three and just played all types of sports and I didn't really like find volleyball until junior high like each quarter you could sign up for something new so I was like football then basketball then baseball and then like fourth quarter came around i was like what sport is there to play and like none of them looked fun except volleyball and i mean we all as kids grew up you know playing don't let the balloon touch the floor so i was like <laughs> i must be the next olympian so i gotta go play volleyball <laughs> and my mom was a stud volleyball player in high school uh so she's like encouraged me she's like oh this should be so fun and then i played and it was like typical junior high volleyball you know this we always had whoever was in right back set whoever was in middle front hit middle and then we just rotated around so i just played every single position in the book hey man that's a more advanced offense than what i ran in seventh grade it was middle <laughs> front set <laughs> yeah. so i mean that was about it i mean i didn't think much of it just because i was like a diehard football like i'm gonna be the next like quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals or the Minnesota Vikings you know that was my route and volleyball was just something fun to play in junior high and then it was freshman year of high school that um same thing happened football season was over looking for something to stay in shape and I I like playing volleyball so I was like you know what I'll try out and made the JV team uh I was a starter somehow uh and the varsity coach was like hey like you're tall you're athletic like you should try to play club like you could maybe be the starting varsity setter as a sophomore if you'd like that because we had a senior in the program who was about to leave and I was like well that sounds awesome I'd love to be a, a varsity setter like starting off as a sophomore that's awesome so he signed me up for club and it was really tough because club and football went hand in hand so I would leave football practice and drive straight to the volleyball gym do volleyball and then go right home and try to do my homework yeah like, pretty much midnight just based on how everything was and I mean that was just my first year just grinding but man I fell in love with volleyball once you I mean once you step on the court and actually play with like high level guys and I mean club is totally different from the high school scene and it was it was just an awesome experience so like I fell in love right then and then it was my sophomore year that I switched to a different club team because uh it was a really like premier team at the time and they were just looking for a guy to come in and be a practice setter so i was like yeah like i'll get reps and somehow i managed to work my way into the starting spot within two weeks of joining that team and we went to nationals and we were played in the club division but we crushed it and then like that team decided to just stay together for the next two years and by our 18s year we won the open national championship and i was like you know what forget football it was it was fun while it lasted but i think i have more success in the volleyball avenue so i'm gonna I'm pursue that 
and I uh, found my way onto Cal Baptist roster and yep. started as a freshman. And man, that was eye-opening because I mean, it's one thing to win Open National Championship, but it's another thing to step into the MPSF at that time and face USC, BYU, like on a consistent basis. And exactly. you're just like this one wide freshman trying to set. And it's like, you know, you got used to like, you can get away with stuff. But now it's like, if you show your set, you, you're you putting your hitters up against a double block and probably one of the biggest blocks in the nation. And it's like, that's not fun. So I had to learn really quickly uh, how to handle myself at another higher level of volleyball. But it was an amazing experience. And then, yeah, then I moved on and I had to, I wanted to graduate with a degree in sports management. And unfortunately, Cal Baptist didn't have that. So I looked around and I talked to, so I talked to Penn State, I talked to Loyola and I talked to GCU who all have premier uh, sports management programs. And luckily I knew Worley at GCU and it seemed like a really good fit. And they, they all, a lot of my credits would transfer. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. And luckily for me, uh, as soon as I went over there, they were mo- they had a plan to move back into the MPSF. Right. So that was an awesome time to just get in, get my foot back in the door. And yeah, I was I was going to ask about that because uh, geographically, it never made any sense for Grand Canyon, Arizona, to be playing in the MIVA. Uh, yeah. But then competitively, when once that program started to get a lot better, it made even more sense to be in the MPSF, especially when the MPSF split, like with the whole Big West coming into existence. So you were rolling in there right around the right time, especially like also. Cal Baptist cut their program like right after you left. It was, yeah. I mean, that was a totally crazy time because I mean, the head coach at the time was like, Hey, like we like, can you stay? Can like, we, we like, we need you. And I was like, no, like this is probably best for my future. Just thinking about it, like in terms of a degree and it it ended up, they just cut the program entirely that summer. And I was like, wow, that was, I got out at the perfect time. Yeah, Somehow, I don't know. Yeah, it was just crazy to get out at that time and also move into a team that has great coaching and it's just a great environment. And I mean, also at that time, Ohio State was just one of the, the peak teams and to like to go, go and play against them was super fun. Yeah, that was right at the tail end of their dominant era of winning both national championships in 16 and 17. And the Miva won four in a row those those years between loyal and ohio state right when you were kind of showing up and then then the power shift went back to the west coast uh with long beach the following couple years so it seemed like wherever whatever conference grand canyon was in was where the ballers were at uh at those times so grand canyon is a program that i don't know from my perspective as a fan watching over the past 10 years or so um has is I don't know. In my head, it's a very young program, but has really like stepped up its level of competition in the past couple years, including when you were there. And this year, before the season got cut short, they were top ten. They were beating. They had beaten yeah. UCLA. They had. Uh, they were beating really, really good teams. Um, what was that like to be a part of? And even the the you played only two seasons or three? How how are, two seasons? Two yeah, seasons. Two what uh even since you've left and in those two seasons what uh what changes have you seen in that program um i just guess like the culture totally like changed and i remember when i was coming in as a junior like they had already like were talking about wanting to change like the culture of the team because i mean it was at one point just kind of like you know like the layback guys that want to play division one but you know they weren't gonna try as hard as they could but then with a change in the class and the change with Worley stepping into being the head coach he kind of like wanted to make sure like we became a a top team and everybody kind of got on board with that and we we worked our butts off in the gym and in the weight room just trying to like go and compete and not be one of those teams that gets stepped over every single season so I stepped in at like the perfect time with everybody wanting the kind of same vision that I mean I've always envisioned is trying to win the national championship granted that didn't happen but the work ethic every single day we pushed each other and it was awesome just to see that and just be a part of that. And, um, just to grow as my own player, just have people that wanted to push me and, and keep me not, not let me slack was I think really detrimental to my own career, especially beyond college. Yeah. So were you always a setter from the very beginning or did you play other stuff other than the silly junior high offense we talked about? Um, I always wanted to be a setter and I think it just went from the fact that 
my reasoning for wanting to be a quarterback in football was because I knew I was kind of, I mean, I was never going to be the biggest, but I had height and I was tall, which I mean, you can, you can teach skills, but you can't teach height is what my dad always said. So he's like, if you want to be a quarterback, like your height's going to help you out getting recruited. He, he said the same thing about when I wanted, I, to, I told him I wanted to step into volleyball. He was like, I mean, you see a lot of six, two, six, three setters. You don't see a lot of six, four, six, five, six, six setters. Granted, I mean, at the, division, now, but... at the division level now, you see like, I mean, UCLA has got the 6'10 kid now. So yeah. it's like, height's not as important to setters. But at the time, I thought that would give me an advantage being a taller setter and help me get looked at possibly. So I always wanted to be a setter. And I just, I think just going from how I played every position, I, I played pitcher in baseball. I mean, I played, I tried to play point guard in basketball, but I was never the best. So, and plus I was usually taller. So they usually put me under the rim. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I've been quarterback for football. I mean, I like having the ball and making the decisions. So. Yeah. There's, there's some level of, of like fit for that position, like being the guy, being the guy to control the offense and the easiest analogy ever to make to describe what the setter position is like is it's like the quarterback of the volleyball offense. And so that makes a lot of sense for you. But like uh, having watched you the last couple of years, if there was a word I could use to describe your like the way you set the ball, the way you play the position, it would probably be physical. You bring a certain like athleticism and and strength to the to the position where you're up there, you're like a serious blocking threat. You can score points throwing the ball down. You got the jump serve. Uh, you're beating people on jousts. Um, so obviously the setter position is so much about running your offense, uh, but there's a lot more to it, especially at the very highest levels now of guys that are bigger and guys that have more skills than just that. So, uh, and this can transition kind of into what, what, when we're talking about the Czech Republic where you were this past year, uh, has, has that, has like the whole athleticism strength, like physicality thing always been a part of the way you played the setter position or was it more of like a learned thing? Yeah, I think it's always been a part of the game that I've wanted to bring. And it's funny because, like, attacking the ball and being physical, uh, my high school coach told me I wasn't allowed to dump the ball. Really? He was like, we have, we, have all, we have all Arizona, all state hitters. Why would you dump? Just set them the ball. So, like, I, would, I remember there was, like, a few times where I'd dump and, like, score and I'd run around the court and then I'd see <laughs> him on the sideline just mad like he's about to pull me out because I didn't set somebody even though we scored the point. Uh, but my club coach uh, who I had during those last three years club was the one who just really taught me. He's like, hey, like, every, like, every setter at the highest level is going to be able to put the ball in a location that a hitter can hit. It's the other intangibles that you bring, the – you're blocking, you're digging, you're you're serving. That's the stuff that's going to help you stand out to college recruiters and eventually going to help you stand out to foreign teams that want to bring you on. So that's why I, I just knew that, you know, um, if I could be physical and I can show people that I can block and score points, that will help not only open up my offense, but also help me um, just help my team win as well. So I always tried to work on that and just try to be physical because I thought that was the most fun for me, dumping the ball. Yeah. So, well, well said, and and you're right. It's the the that bit of the game that sets you kind of apart from other setters. It also makes you really fun to watch. It's a it's easy to get attracted to a setter who can make a lot of other plays, especially for someone who doesn't know the game that well. So like, I don't know, people might not appreciate you dishing and getting one on ones for your hitters as much as they might appreciate you like going up and throwing someone down on a joust or something. Totally. So that's yeah. pretty cool. So uh, since GCU, uh, you made the jump over to Europe. Uh, you went to the Czech Republic, and I had Matt August on the show, like in the, one of the first couple episodes, and he was in the same league in the Czech Republic. He talked about playing against you a couple times. So uh, uh, the people who have been listening to the show forever know a little bit about the league since I had him on. Uh, but I want to hear more about your experience because it was definitely different than his. Uh, first of all, from a volleyball sense, what's the biggest difference between Czech Republic, like A League, and MPSF volleyball? Um, I think I noticed a big difference in consistency. Um, granted, like you go in the MPSF and like kids are ripping 72 mile per hour jump spin serves, but they're also missing a lot versus now when we went to the check, it's like maybe they're not hitting 72, but they're hitting 68 and they're not going to miss. They're yeah, going to keep they're painting sidelines. And, and mm. yeah, it's going to be, it's going to come over the net. So there's no like, time where you can just kind of like oh, like breathe like he hit it in the net it's like oh this ball's coming over zach you now have to run the offense let's see what you can do 
And I think that was one of the biggest things that I had to like learn that like no point was going to be given or be easy. You had to earn and step up and find a way to actually win 25 points or whatever to win a set and win a match. You had to actually earn all those points. Nothing was really going to be given at any night. Okay. And how about the language barrier? That's something that I really am interested about league to league and in, in your case, kind of city to city within the Czech Republic. Because Matt August said that like, he was in one of the bigger cities in Czech and it was definitely more English speaker friendly than probably yours was. But on the volleyball court, it can be a little bit different. So tell me about that a little bit. Yeah, totally. So where I lived was a smaller city, kind of close to the German border. So a lot of my teammates... Um, grew up there and they went to high school and whatever there and they learned German in school instead of English mm. because I mean it was more prevalent to them to learn German since they were going to deal with more German people than English people. Um, luckily for me we had a couple of younger guys on our team who were fresh out of school and they chose to learn English so it was a little bit easier communicating with some of the younger guys like my, my middle and the backup setter was they spoke really good English, so it was easy to communicate with them. But some of the older guys, and I even had one teammate that only spoke like just volleyball terms, like higher, lower, <laughs> faster. And if it was a good set, like he was one of those guys that just gets really fired up. So he'd just come and just shove me to the ground and just scream <laughs> in my face. But like I knew it was a good set. So I mean, um, yeah, I think especially being a setter and dealing with language barrier stuff, you got to just really try to dial it in and just and be okay with criticism because yeah. you have to like get on page with these guys within a couple of months because season's going to start and you want to win. And you just got to be like, Hey, tell me what you need every single set and just do the best you can to explain higher, lower, faster, slower. Cause I mean, there's multiple times when he would want it faster, but he would say higher. And it's wow. like, when you kind of have to see the mistakes they're making as a setter Understand, understand what they're why. asking for, but then kind of figure out, yeah, kind of be like, okay, maybe not higher necessarily. Maybe he just wanted it faster through the pin. So it's kind of like I had to deal with some of that stuff, which was kind of hard at first, like just because you go from playing with English-speaking people where it's just like you can, you can just talk back and forth really quick in between a play and have it nailed out for the next set versus then it's like now I'm having to be a little more analytical and really try to be on top of uh, my communication with my teammates. Yeah, that's a test of your volleyball IQ and your teammate ability as a setter, which is a huge part of playing the position, as as you well know. And it, it's a, an interesting thing that I didn't really think about, about the communication thing being even more important for you than it is for probably any other position. So at least you got a couple English speakers to help you out around there. Uh, but it's funny that you said like higher, not necessarily being the same thing as faster. Because uh, yeah. like my biggest criticism that I, that I ever have at setters at remotely high levels is that a lot of time they'll sacrifice height in the name of speed. Like they'll just try to gun the ball out there to like the second white bit of the antenna just to get fast, yeah. fast, 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 and it never gets high enough for the hitter. So you get stuck in that weird little yeah, elbow yeah. chicken wing swing. And yep. Then, <laughs> and if there's any kind of a block there, they're screwed. Yeah, that's uh, yep. a classic problem. So uh, man, the, trying to s solve that problem around a language barrier is uh, even more interesting. Yeah, definitely. How about, uh, how about serving, blocking the other areas of the game, defending other areas of the game in the Czech Republic compared to the U.S.? I think, I mean, the big thing that they do for sure is there's not as many cheeky, like, little, like, chips off the block or, like, I'm going to roll shot here, I'm going to do a tip here. I mean, I noticed, like, they were big on, like, we're going to rip it. Okay. Especially my teammates were like, oh, triple block, let's hit it as hard as we can. High, yeah, so high hands. They're either getting completely roofed or they're going to hit high hands and it's going to go to the back of the court and other teams going to have to run and try and sprawl and bring it back. And But they, it was definitely – they focused a lot on physicality. So, I mean, if you were defending down the line and your blocker took angle and they were going to hit it line, you got to be not afraid to just step That's in right. there and all right in your chest or your face. I took a few to the face. I took a few to the chest that were like, they stung a little bit, but you can't let the other team see that. So you got to just <laughs> not take it off, walk away. But That's yeah. high level defense. Everyone's taken a few to the face in their day. Oh, yeah. So uh, what was it? How much fun was it to occasionally play against uh, a kid you know in Mad August, see him on the other side of the net? Were you guys like chirping back and forth or what was that like? 
Oh yeah. I mean, it's finally, I felt like my trash talking would actually like <laughs> transfer through and someone would understand it. And, uh, unlucky for me, but lucky for Matt, his team was a little bit better than mine. So, I mean, they did, they did whoop up on us a little bit. So, I mean, it's kind of tough to be chirpy through the net when you're down <laughs> a few points, but it was definitely amazing seeing uh, another friendly face and just a person that you could speak English with after or before the match and just catch up. And even if we needed to take a train ride to Prague for a weekend, we could see each other. Just having familiarity out there makes it a lot easier being on your own in a foreign country than, say, if I was like in Qatar but all by myself, no mm. other Americans, you know? Yeah, great point. That any, any one american friend can really go a long way out there I, I definitely get that yeah so uh one thing that i've been putting a bunch of my last guests through is this like series of super like quick fire rapid fire questions so i'm gonna just give you a series of these and you just give me like the first little quick answer that comes to your head sound good gotcha. yeah let's do it all right uh early mornings or late nights early morning really you're nuts uh best pre-game warm-up song or artist drake Solid. Uh, best day of the week? Saturday for the boys. Nice. Stuff block or service ace? Stuff block. Yeah, I agree. Uh, best post-game meal? Um, anything that has a lot of salt. What's the hardest position in volleyball? Libero. You're not the only person to say that, and I think that's a really good answer. Uh, what's your favorite jersey number? I think I know this one. 11. Oh, really? It's not 15. Yeah. No, I mean, I got stuck with 15. My dad was number 11 growing up, so I always tried to pick 11, but I got stuck with 15 for college. Happens. But good number, too. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs, 100%. What's your favorite sports team, any level, any sport? Vikings football. Why? What's the Minnesota connection? I just got a lot of family out there, and I, I was born in uh, Michigan. But for some reason, growing up as a kid, since we would always go to like see family in Minnesota, I would tell everybody I was born in Minnesota. And it's <laughs> my parents do not let me live that down. They always go, Zach, your sister, I have a twin sister. She's like, your, your twin sister was born in Michigan, but you were born in Minnesota. So, I mean, I've just always had an affinity with Minnesota. And since I grew up loving football, Vikings were my team. Well, Granted, they a, had the easiest root for, but it was a better choice than the Lions, that's for sure. I've, I've lived in Detroit for two years. I, I know a thing or two about that. All right. Uh, who's your favorite athlete? Any sport? Favorite athlete has to be. Um, I love Tom Brady. I don't. I know it's one of those things, but I mean, I love just Tom's spirit and his overall ability to just be the goat. Yep, he's a winner, man. Uh, yeah. If you had a superpower, what would it be? If I had a superpower, it'd be the power to create my own power. So oh, you like, cheater! <laughs> if I, it's like, oh, it's like I will fly today, so I can, I can fly. I mean, I can only have one at a time. I'll okay. limit myself one at a time. But if I want to do all of it, I want to be able to do it all. That's a creative answer. I like that. Uh, what sport are you the best at besides volleyball? Gotta say football. I mean, I played it for so long and did so much studying on it. Yeah. Uh, beach or mountains? Beach. What's your favorite color? My favorite color, I'm gonna say, all right, don't you can't make fun of me because it's the rainbow. And that's <laughs> as, a, as a child, when anybody would ask me what's my favorite color, I'd say the rainbow, and they would ask why, and I would say, well, I don't want to pick one color because I don't want to hurt any of the other colors' feelings. Aww, yeah, so I, was, I, was, I was a very sensitive kid, <laughs> but I, but now I realize that that would make me get made fun of. So I'll say purple. <laughs> Cool. You got a lot of it behind you there on the wall. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, uh, which is stronger for you, loving winning or hating losing? I, I hate to lose. I think that's the strongest one. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm really interested in that in that answer from a lot of people. I think it says a lot about you know who they are as kind of a competitor. Mm -hmm. I go I go back and forth on my answer a lot too. Yeah, I think I mean it's got to be a mixture of both. You gotta love to win and you gotta you gotta hate to lose. I mean, almost relatively, they got to be just almost Close. the same. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. All right. So for the first time ever, I have a, a crowdsourced question on the show. Uh, wow. Uh, take a wild guess who this is from. It's uh, from your longtime coach and now teammate, Mr. Vince Zanzuki, who I've had on this oh. show. 
Uh, so, this, so this should be good. He said uh, he was your first club coach like all the way back in the day, and he was your assistant high school coach. So uh, mm-hmm. you guys have been involved in volleyball together for a long time. Now he's your teammate, but uh, he's kind of the captain. He's the guy for the ascension. So he says, for the following question, Vince Zanzuki takes full responsibility for su- your successful career. He wants you to know that your playing time and angle is dictated by your response to this question. <laughs> and that is, uh, what's it like playing with Vince now after – like as a teammate after all those years of him being your coach, like after in all these different levels? You know, he is amazing. He can make any set. He can hit any ball and get a kill. Um, he's the best. Vince, if you're listening, I really want to play a lot. So. <laughs> um, but, in, but in reality, I mean, I think Vince definitely did open my eyes to the fact that professional volleyball existed since, I mean, I remember when I first was getting into it, I was like, I didn't think it, there was much – longevity in volleyball i was like maybe if you played avp that was the only okay. professional volleyball i knew of and he was the one who kind of told me that like about the leagues in germany and then that's what kind of got my interest rolling and then i went down the youtube rabbit hole of just watching teams like berlin recycling and then getting into the italian league and just i mean man like i love watching volleyball that's all i've been doing during this break like just trying to like if i can't play i'm, I'm gonna watch, watch great volleyball yeah. and i mean i've been doing that since high school when I first like started playing the game and I so I will give it to him that he opened my eyes to the world of professional volleyball and as soon as I knew that was an outlet I was like boom full I'm in. Committed to volleyball so, awesome. yeah definitely. yeah Vince is a great guy I had him on the show everyone go check out that episode from one of the one of the very first episodes of the show but uh you'll, you'll see both of these guys in Angola in a couple of weeks and obviously I, I think that was a good enough answer for Vince to keep your playing time <laughs> up there pretty high <laughs> Because I already bought the plane tickets. So. All right, there you go. <laughs> so uh, another teammate I wanted to ask you about is Joe Kawiakamoa, who I also had on the show, uh, who told some unbelievable stories about being a setter at the very highest levels, like kind of how he approached it. He was just like a legend in college at BYU. I remember watching him when he was in college. Then he made the jump over and played in A1 Italy, like one of the very best leagues in the world. And now since he's moved back to the U.S., he's playing with you guys, playing on the Ascension. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to play outside now. Why not? I'm gonna go and be an outside hitter now. So you, as the, as like the really starting setter with no competition on the team for the most part, you get to set this guy who has more setting experience than almost anyone in our league. What's that like? That's such a unique teammate to have. Yeah, it's awesome just having him out there, um, just to be a guy I can pepper questions with after practice, or he can give me tips. And I mean. I still sometimes like when we're when I dig a ball and he comes out assisting to set it. I'm just like, wow, that's that's a nice set. That's beautiful. Oh yeah, we got it. You know, so but I love him as a teammate too, just because I mean, since he has been a setter for so long, that makes him I I think that makes him that much better of an outside because he he can read my my set out of my hands, which means he can approach the ball a little bit better and he can set himself up and. Also, just his vision from setting now translates over to his vision hitting. And I think that he's just a pretty big role model for me on the team just to be able to – because, I mean, my ultimate dream would be to play in Italy like he did. Yeah. So, I mean, just trying to learn as as much as I can from him and just realize that he's been where I want to be and uh, he knows a lot more than I do. So just being able to have a guy like that with that much experience as a teammate is unreal. Yeah, not a bad situation. I, like when I had Joe on the show, I tried to ask about kind of that same thing where like the, the transferable skills from setting to hitting and, you know, how he can see the game from all these different angles. And Joe's really modest, so he wouldn't like really really yeah. tell me how like how good he was at all these things. But I but I know it and you definitely know it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> exactly. He's amazing. Uh, so you, you mentioned that you guys have had just one practice now back as the Ascension, like indoor, uh, it's going to be really interesting when we get everyone in, in the gym at Lloyd's place in a couple weekends, the level of volleyball that we're going to see, because there's been such this long layoff, like every athlete who's had this break is going to take a while to get back into it. Um, as we, as each, you know, league and each different sport kind of rolls back into competitive mode, uh, I don't know how many practices you guys are going to be able to have between now and when you get back when you when you fly east to come compete but like what what are the goals for you guys as a team to kind of accelerate this this you know speed up process back to competitive level yeah i think we're definitely just trying to get that chemistry back because i mean volleyball is definitely like riding a bike you know we're all going to get right back on track so learning how to then 
get back and co and seed as a team. I think that's what we're definitely focusing on with these practices is just learning how to play with each other again. I mean, I haven't set these guys for, I mean, six, seven months. So trying to get back to where do they like it and just trying to nail out those little things because we're going to get our, our volleyball IQ is also there. And it's just about getting comfortable seeing each other again and just getting those last minute touches because, you know, Team Pineapple has that nice facility up there. So we know they've been getting their reps on. So we're Probably. hoping to try to compete with them for sure. So we know that any chance, any gym we can find out here, we're going to try and get our touches in. Yeah, and that's a good point. You've got some, you're about to have some pretty stiff competition at, the, at this event. Like the Icemen of, uh, in Chicago, I know they've gotten into the gym a little bit. I'm certain Team Pineapple has, like you said, because two of their guys own gyms. And then I wouldn't doubt at all if LVC up in New York has gotten some time in the gym as well. So, I think the level is going to be pretty good by the, in a couple of weeks by the time we get in there. So is this like being the first the first real VLA event? Like I know your guys played a bunch of preseason scrimmages when, while you were overseas. Uh, what what you guys and your you and your teammates? What are you thinking about the stakes of this thing? Like what what's the motivation for coming into Angola and trying to win this one? You know we all want to win, especially you know just after all the work we've been putting been putting forward and trying to get this league going and all the stuff that's happened. And, uh, you know, we're just happy to finally have a weekend where we can show off these results that we've been working for and trying to get this league off the ground, because I think it's really important. And we all, all the teams and all the players know how amazing it would be to have this big like league of for volleyball players to start in America and not have to do all these Americans have to go to Europe and go to these different places to play it'd be awesome to be able to get a league going. So for us, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just to be able to showcase that, hey, volleyball is big. There's a lot of talent here, and it's going to be really exciting and fun to watch. And this is something that people need to buy into and help support and just get it going, get it off the ground running. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. Uh, a lot of good stuff to play for this weekend. A lot of talent to showcase, like you were saying. Uh we're going to put a pretty good product on the floor and people are going to watch it and people are going to fall in love with it. So we cannot wait to get you and your Ascension guys out on the floor with the other, the other couple teams that are showing up. So Zach, thanks so much for hopping on the show, man. Uh, this has been awesome. Uh, your Instagram's on the screen here uh, at Zach and smack em, which is an incredible Instagram handle, by the way. Yeah. Shout out my Spanish teacher. He came up with my name. Really? That's great. Yeah. Uh, so everyone give this guy a follow uh, you'll see a lot more of him uh, in a couple July 4th weekend when we get some volleyball back in the floor so uh, until then Zach thanks for hopping on the show everyone else will see you next time thanks for having me